season four. Four of the year. Today, we're black and blue. Hopefully, I won't make Enrique black and blue by the end of the session. So, guys, we um, uh, we have a couple questions that we got. Uh, usually, we give priority to the live ask questions, but we're going to start with that. So, what do we got, Mike? So, the first question is from B Aziz. He's from Morocco. He's asking, Fox, can you please show me retention guard when the opponent passes knee cut into split guard? Okay, so that's a good question, guys. Um, the the issue is when somebody does a knee cut, the problem is their hips are just too close to me. So it's going to be very difficult to regard into a split guard. You could just see that it's, it's going to be almost impossible for me to put my feet on the hips. So instead of doing that, what I'm looking to do is, is a couple of things. So first one is when, when the guy, I'm trying to keep his arm open so I can go come out the back way. Get an underhook, and then I depend, depending on how he reacts, I'm coming out the back way. Oh, you gonna drive into me? <laughs> Let's do this. All right. So that's so underhook is the first option. Let's look at it again. So if I can get, notice how what I'm doing is with my left leg, I'm bracing to make sure that I can stick my arm under his armpit so I can get an underhook. So if if I just do this, it's gonna be very difficult. But by, by the time he gets slightly forward, my underhook is gone. So it's critical that you don't just do it with your hand or your arm, but also use the leg. So as he's cutting through, I'm already bracing and I'm coming out the back way. I'm gonna help him get a little forward and then I'm coming out the back way. A lot of times if I can come into turtle, even if he starts to prevail with his, um, yeah, he started to prevail and then I just go back the other way. <laughs> yes, it's happening. Oh, we have it. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to get a submission as long as you get another submission. Well, yes. <laughs> as long as you basically bail out of the guard pass. So underhook is one option. Now we're gonna go over what happens if he does not allow me to get an underhook. So this time it just, so when that happens guys, this is the idea. So I want him to, if you remember the, the class from, I don't remember what episode. So I want, when Enrique is top of side control, I want him either my, on my hips. You know what, let's just do this. Go back to side control. So I want Enrique on my hips. So I can pop him up and regard, in which case now I can go into split guard or my shoulders, all right? Because now my hips can move, okay? So I don't have to free my hips. So when I feel that he's passing a knee cut and he's not allowing me to get the underhook so I can come out the back way, what I'm looking to, to do is make sure that he stays on my shoulders. So he's effectively pinning my shoulders to the mat. However, the rest of my body can move. So when he's preventing me from getting an underhook, what I'm looking to do is, is basically almost battle from the bottom of side control. And this is probably the one I'm gonna hit him with. So it's basically an immediate threat of, of an arm bar. Let's look at it from another angle. So basically, I know my guard is passed, so I'm not even trying to stop him at this point. It's, it's just, it's too late. You're not gonna stop him. So what I'm looking to do is just extend, pop him up, and threaten armbar. Even if Enrique manages to yank out, he's back in my guard, and then I can battle from, back from my guard. One more time. This is important, guys. This is basically an important concept. I think a lot of people get in trouble, especially at the high level of competition. See this in IBJJF competitions all the time at the high level, is where the guy is getting his guard passed and it's happening. It's just, it's, uh, and they don't want the points against them for the guard, guard pass, three, three points. So basically what they'll do is they'll turn their back, they'll do things that are stupid to just to make sure the guard does not get passed. And a lot of times they expose 
their back or, or expose themselves to a submission because they're fighting so hard. A guard pass had effectively already happened. So it's very important to understand when something, whatever you're doing, whether it's offensively or defensively, that you actually understand that whatever your technique was, whatever you're trying to do has been effectively taken away from you and move on to the next thing before it gets completely taken away from you. He settles down top side control, makes adjustments, and now he's very heavy on you. So again, what I'm looking to do is, is if, if my guard is get, getting passed with uh, the knee cut and he gets it strong underhook, what I'm looking to do is almost just change the angle and attack. Again, if the attack, this is, this is good, but even if it doesn't happen, Okay. So now we can battle for my guard. All right. So that's um, that's my approach to sort of having a guard either pass or nearly pass from from uh, uh, knee cut. So I hope that answers your question. Now, one question related to the knee cut while it's uh, passing is, a lot of peers asking, how do you recommend approaching a leg locker to pass his guard when you're standing and the opponent is sitting? Carefully. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, I, I don't want him, so if, if I'm going against a leg locker, I don't want him to be in butterfly guard. So what I usually try to do is, I step in. So this, this temporarily disrupts what they got going. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, just remember, when you go in it with a leg locker, it's your better bet to move forward than backwards. So if I fall, if I screw this up and, and, and I'm going forward, it, this kind of creates a little bit of a scramble where I can bail out of it. On the other hand, if I fall backwards, if he makes me fall backwards, yeah, this is, almost, this is pretty much done. So again, first of all, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when they get hit with an Imanari roll is to, is to try to escape it backwards. Are you warm, uh, are you warm yeah. enough for an Imanari roll? Hopefully. And hopefully I won't <laughs> kick you in the head. So, so <laughs> we're gonna do. A, so again, if, if I get hit with an Imanari roll, I want to move forward so that way this gives me a scramble that I might be able to make something happen. What people tend to do is, is try to bail backwards. And that's when the scramble results usually in, in a submission. So that's one. So again, if he's down, so if, I, if he's a leg locker, I'm trying to go in between his legs. I'm trying to get head and arm control. So if he's sitting up, right now I'm in a good position. I'm already feeding his gi and then I try to drive forward. Right now, as long as I control his head, there is th no, almost no possibility of a leg lock. So from here, I'm gonna try to pass. If he gets on top of me, I'm gonna choke him. But again, I'm looking for head and arm control. No leg locks, denied, <laughs> denied. <sighs> so when I have uh, a leg locker, I'm thinking head and arm control, head and arm control, and forward movement. So even if I do get knocked down, usually when you face a leg locker, if they can off balance you and put, your, put you on the ground, they're ent you're entering their world. So if I, if I have to go down, I want to go forward rather than backwards. Um, but and one other thing is, so if I have a leg lock, I try to back step. Again, this tends to neutralize their attacks. From here, he's got his own issues right now. Um, I'm not sure how it goes. But a lot of times, yeah, and I'm looking again, you know, if I can't have an head and arm control, I'm looking for the for the arm control, you know. So again, if you prevent him, yeah, good luck with that leg lock, Enrique. So, generally speaking, 
with a leg locker. If I'm up and he's down, um, the, the basic principles are I try to prevent him from going by the fly guard. Uh, if the guy has good inversions into sort of reverse, uh, reverse El Hiva, yeah, yeah. I want to, I want to, I want to have a low base. And again, I'm looking to control the head. With the gi, it's a little bit easier because first of all, I don't worry about the heel hooks with the gi, but also I, I can grab. I'm already controlling Enrique's collar, but I want to have low level so he cannot, he cannot invert underneath me. And how do you like them apples? Obviously, you have your own attacks. But again, um, when I leg lock people, I, I, I don't have the most flexible uh, ankles or knees. So I will generally try to uh, stay away from leg attacks that put me in almost symmetrical position relative to, to, to the other guy. I will generally speaking, when I do go for leg locks, I want to make sure that both my legs are protected. And usually that's with a knee bar as a start. <clears throat> Another question, this is from Engsberg. He's asking, when you go for the when I go for the Urigatami and I lose the elbow, is it possible to go for the inverted armbar? Okay. Engsberg, a uh, long time viewer. So that's a good question. Uh, first of all, if you're losing the elbow, you're doing something wrong. So uh, you should not be losing the elbow. That's that's generally a, a, a pretty uh, pretty big failure. So one of the things that people do wrong is they don't, let's see, to this one. So they grabbing the elbow without having adequate protection with your head to make sure that that arm does not slip. So if I do this, it's gonna be much harder for him to pull the elbow out than if I just do this. That's almost given. So two, what, the reason why you're not getting it is you're not, so, Initially, I start to stretch, but as I'm stretching, I need to go almost perpendicular to Enrique. I gotta be looking at his ear. This now, Enrique is not pulling his arm up. It's not gonna happen. Even with one foot on the hip, obviously I'd like to have both, but I can just have one, that's enough. But I need to go somewhat perpendicular. So chances are you're not, the path, you're not following the path. So probably you're not bringing your head high, uh, uh, close enough to his shoulder. That's one. So this is gonna be much harder for him to retract that if I just kinda of adopt, I call it lazy, it's not lazy, it's not that you're lazy, just don't think that the head placement is important enough. It is very, very important. So here it's gonna be much harder. And as, so as soon as I get it, I'm lined up with Enrique, right? But as soon as I do, I start to stretch and I start to cut the angle to wind up perpendicular. So now he's not gonna pull out his arm. That, it's gonna be very, very, very difficult. Now, as far as if you do lose it, there is better options. Because if I try to go for an inverted arm bar, like bringing my, yeah, this is almost for sure gonna get you past the gate to high level guy. So maybe it may work, but it's, it's a low probability, especially against experienced, experienced guys. So if I do lose it and I get a decent bite, triangle is the best option. So I usually clamp down on that wrist. So and you have to have a decent enough bite where you stretch him out. You, his posture is broken, he's stretched out. Then you might be able to have a good, tri uh, good triangle attack. I would take that over an inverted arm bar because almost by definition when the guy is so, uh, for an arm bar, for good arm bar, you need to be perpendicular. The fact that you're losing the elbow is you're not perpendicular. So to go inverted, off a guy that's not perpendicular, that's big movement, that's, that's trying to do too many things in a very short period of time, and very highly likely it's gonna, it's gonna fail. So, again, so I sit up, if I go perpendicular, the, the bite is on completely, yeah, this is on. Okay, he takes it away from me, I have him stretched out. So it's gonna be hard for him, even if he places, yeah, he, it's very difficult for him to, stop the, the leg because I can keep undercutting him, I can swim inside. This is a better solution. So that's what I would do um, if you lose the elbow. But try to do a better job with your head 
coming to the shoulder. Guys, I literally put my forehead on their shoulder. You could do this when you, when, especially when I'm standing and I'm doing sort of what you get time and guard pull. Head on the shoulder, because that's what prevents his elbow from slipping out immediately where you have nothing. And I do the same thing on the on the ground, even if, if especially when you, if, if the guy's standing on top of you. So if I'm gonna hit this, my head is on the shoulder. So Enrique right now is is lined up with me. So now I have to change the angle. So it's almost like a, um, as I'm pulling back, my arms are making kind of a big arch. Of course, I don't lose the connection. I'm exaggerating here so you guys can see this. Now I'm perpendicular. Now Enrique is on the run. Okay? Again, if I lose this, to try to, yeah, just remember, generally speaking, when you're armbarring people, you want to be perpendicular, generally speaking. So right now, this is, this is a better solution. So even if Enrique, if Enrique starts to back away because he feels the threat, now I can go for an armbar. So if he starts to back away, as long as I clamp down on that wrist, um, I can switch to an armbar. But if he's not backing away, I'm going to hit him with a triangle. He said... I was not bringing my head to the shoulder. I think I was trying to crunch my hands to my chest. Yeah, yeah, I figured that. <laughs> I have seen my share of, of people messing things up. And guys, it's, it's amazing. This is the amazing part of a jiu-jitsu, and this is one of the reasons I'm doing this, is it's the little things that make a big difference. Literally every single day, guys, I appreciate your comments, and literally every single day I get messages from people, um, hey, you know, you showed me this, and... Uh, I'm hitting this immediately. Makes me feel good, guys, because I think uh, it makes, it validates sort of my vision of jiu-jitsu as being super technical, that you make small adjustments to things that people, people already think they know, and suddenly becomes, goes from a weapon that's hardly ever used because they don't view it as effective, to suddenly, you know, uh, the, the, the latest guy was, uh, he came to the Costa Rica camp and he was just like, he's hitting triangles left and right on people, even high-level guys, and and, uh, you know, it's, it, everybody thinks they don't triangle once you've been training for six months. No, you don't. And another question. This is from MJ. He's, uh, he's saying, hey, Fox, uh, I, was I was always wondering how to best avoid the lazy guard recovery when, the knee slide when knee sliding in and how to advance and establish safely side control. From the top? So, I'm on top. Yeah. All right. To avoid your own skate. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Is this a circular function? <laughs> what, what would a computer do? <laughs> error, error, error. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I'm doing this, I try to go north-south. Hmm. Okay, go ahead. What are you going to do now? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at it one more time. So guys, everything in Jiu-Jitsu has a counter. Everything. Even rear naked choke for the locked in. The problem with that is uh, the counter is going to take you some time to execute during which time you're getting choked. So same thing with a deeply, deeply embedded heel hook. Yeah, you can escape, but there's a good chance that your knee may, may, may pop and... So, it would one day. <laughs> you know, uh, but everything has an answer. It's just a question who's got, first of all, greater arsenal, but not just who has greater arsenal, but who ha who's better at using that arsenal, who's got a better execution abilities, better timing, better, uh, but more, more precise. So as I'm cutting through, I, I know I'm trying to go north-south already. So... A lot of times when, when I'm coming through, I like loose passing just because for me, I don't like to, you know, with tight passing, I will use tight passing. I will drop in and, you know, threaten tight pass. If I get it, I get it. If not, I go back to. So a lot of times changing up the rhythm will, will sort of short circuit the other guy's brain a little bit briefly, which allows you to do whatever uh, you intend, whether it's you switching from fast and loose passing to to tight passing, or you, go, you have to go back to fast and loose. 
But I usually know that if I knee cut, the guy is gonna try to either come to, to their knees or actually just try to regard pretty easily. So I try to go north, north south. And we're already out of time. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> is that a Swiss watch? <laughs> the best. It's an Ecuadorian watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <it's> a... <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you next week. Share, subscribe, like. like. Uh, I don't follow. know. What else can you do? Don't critique. <laughs> well, you can critique, guys. I, I am a fan of, of, of constructive criticism. It, constructive criticism is good, uh, but also understand that you don't want to be constantly like telling people wh what to do and how to do it when you have never done it yourself. So, yeah, I appreciate the, the critique because it makes the show better. Uh, but also, uh, again, you know, uh, literally the day we got the, uh, the, the fuzzy mic, you want to show it, Mike? And it's literally visible in some of the, some of the shots of the, of the episode. Somebody says, Fox, come on, you've been doing this for a couple of years, can't you get a decent mic? Well, we just, we did. And that was actually the show. So, again, guys, if anybody's got the means to build me a soundproof studio that can travel around the world, I'll be happy to use it. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>